Hey, this is Scott Hildon with Blink Worldwide. I, uh, I've been, I've downloaded the, uh, the newest version of Premiere Pro. This is the 2015.3 version, uh, which we were very excited about for a number of different reasons. Uh, one particular feature that, that uh, we really were excited to implement within our shop is the proxy workflow. So now that we've got uh, the CC 2015.3, um, I've been diving into th this proxy workflow and uh, for the most part work works pretty well but I have one uncovered one uh, one small thing that that is going to affect us um, that's a little bit of, uh, of an annoyance uh, but I think I figured out maybe a way to overcome it so I want to share with you that workflow right now in case you're running into some of the same issues as us so I have my Premiere Pro workface open here um, and I'm going to go ahead and import some clips. <clears throat> I'm just going to take a, a range of clips here. This, these are, this is footage that we uh, shot on location in Albania. Um, and something maybe a little bit uh, special about these clips is all this footage is coming off the brand new Canon 1DX Mark II. Uh, one thing we loved about it was the ability to shoot all the way up to 120 frames per second. Uh, which gives us this nice, smooth, buttery slow motion. Now, one thing that we discovered uh, as we began shooting in this particular mode is that instead of giving uh, writing 120 frames per second into the file, it would actually do that footage interpretation on camera before it uh, wrote itself to the card. And by default, and this is a setting that, uh, as far as we know, is not able to change, um, it writes these files at a 29.97 frame per second time base. So when we bring that footage into Premiere, that's of course what Premiere recognizes it as. Um, now we, we tend to mostly edit on 24 frames or 23.976 uh, timelines. And we definitely prefer that aesthetic in, in most cases. Um, so bringing in footage at 30 frames per second is is not ideal for us. So, um, but this is a fairly simple thing to fix here within Premiere. Um, if we just right click on that clip, go to modify and interpret footage, uh, this setting allows us to have Premiere interpret this footage a little bit differently. So I'm going to tell Premiere that I want it to assume that this piece of footage is indeed 23.976 frames per second. So that adjusts the way that it, it interprets each frame in that clip and now gives us a, a true 24 frame per second playback, which I tend to like a lot more. Um, now, where this becomes a challenge is now what? Now I want to begin to work in kind of in a proxy workflow. And as you see, it, as I imported the clips, I did not have the settings you know, set so that it automatically created proxies for me on ingest. And I did that very specifically because uh, we have to do a little bit of a workaround here. Um, so in order to now generate proxies for these files, all I have to do is right click on the clip that I want to create a proxy for and come down here to the proxy setting and click create proxies. That brings up a dialog box here that allows me to choose from a number of different settings. Um, in this case, I'm going to uh, use an H.264 format, and this is actually a preset that I created myself, uh, 960 by 540 in H.264. Um, and we've got our destination settings here. So when I hit OK, what's going to happen in the background is Media Encoder is going to launch, and it's going to set up a, a batch in Media Encoder for me with all of these presets plugged in, and it's going to automatically start it. So I'm going to hit OK, and going to switch over to Media Encoder to see show you what's happening. Uh, so here we are in Media Encoder. It's loaded up that clip. It's added my particular preset that I wanted on there, and it's going through that rendering process. So we'll let that go ahead and finish. And before this gets all the way complete, um, I want to point you over here to Premiere, where now in this proxy column that I've that I've put in my uh, 
in my window here it says that this clip is offline now because it's looking for a proxy because I told it it was going to have a proxy but the file is not yet created yet been created so as soon as this file is done transcoding you'll then see this attribute change so let's switch back over to here and now we see this attribute is changed to attach which means now I have a proxy file that's been associated with this online file um, and we've success successfully created a proxy uh, for that file. Now in the Adobe Workflow, um, all we need to do is um, I added this toggle proxies button down here into my toolbar and now I can easily take my full res clip, click the toggle button here and now I've switched over to my proxy version of that file and back again. Now, <clears throat> here's where we start running into some issues. Um, you'll notice at the beginning of, of this clip when I switch over to proxy, nothing really changes. Um, nothing, you can't see much that changes because this window is so small that you don't really detect the, the difference in resolution um, and clarity in the clip. Um, but if we scroll forward, let's say to this point in the clip, Watch what happens when I click the toggle proxies button. It is actually jumping to a different point in the clip. And for a long time, I could not figure out why it was doing that, why it was not able to keep the full res piece of footage in sync with the proxy. And then uh, it suddenly dawned on me that it must have something to do with the fact that this clip natively is 29.97, but uh, Premiere is treating it as a 23.976 frame per second. So my theory was that when a proxy was created, it was not created at 23.976 frames per second as it's interpreted in Premiere. Rather, it is created in a 29.97 frame per second clip. And thus, you know, the time, the run times of those clips are going to be different, which would explain why they do not stay in sync big problem. I couldn't believe that this was the case and so I did a little digging around and discovered this brand new Premiere Pro reference guide that has all of the new proxy workflow guidelines written into it and I did discover this one little line down here that says modify audio channels and interpret footage are not supported for proxy workflows. Uh, so this was rather disappointing to me because all of a sudden this proxy workflow was not going to work uh, in this particular project because we had so much of this 120 frame per second footage out of the 1DX Mark II. So it was my goal to try to figure out a workflow, to figure out how to make this uh, actually work. And I think I have figured it out. Um, it's, it's, a, it's one or two extra steps, um, which of course is not ideal, but but it works. Well, what I discovered is that like Premiere Pro that has this interpret footage setting, uh, Media Encoder also has this interpret footage setting. So we bounce over here. So this is my project that's our, or my clip that's already done. Just for the, the sake of showing you this, let me reset the status on this. If you right click on this clip, and there you'll see a, a setting here for interpret footage, just like we have in Premiere Pro, and it's exactly the same dialog box. So I do have the opportunity, before I actually do an encode on anything, to change the way this clip is being interpreted. So I can change that to 23.976. And now, if I run, uh, if I start this transcoding process, it will now create my proxy file with the correct interpretation and at the correct frame rate and the theory is that it will stay in sync with uh, my interpreted clip in Premiere Pro. So how does this, how does this actually work into the, into the workflow? How can we make this a seamless process? So in order to demonstrate that, let me kind of restart from scratch. So I'm at this point, I've, I've reinterpreted these clips and I'm going to create proxies. So I'm going to go through the same process 
and I'm going to hit OK. But right after I hit OK, I want to switch over to Media Encoder and stop the encode because by, def by default, the encoding process is going to begin automatically. But I don't want it to because it's not going to be interpreting the footage correctly. Um, so let me hit OK. I'm going to jump over here and I'm going to hit stop. I've been looking for all kinds of ways to force this not to start the encode automatically, but so far I have not found a way. So before it goes through the encoding process, again, I'm going to reset the status and I'm kind of come to interpret footage. And reinterpret it at 23.976 and now I will start that queue again. All right, now this clip has finished uh, transcoding. I'm gonna jump back over here to Premiere and see what happens. And we'll notice uh, this proxy status has not changed from offline to attached like I hoped it would. Um, and the reason I found out is that because we stopped the encode after it already started, it essentially created a file that it was associating with our clip here in Premiere Pro. But we stopped that encoding process and essentially threw away that file. So when I reset it and restarted it, it created a new file that that Premiere really doesn't recognize as being the one attached to this clip. So again, another inf unfortunate uh, workaround here. Uh, but it's a simple fix. All we have to do is right click on this clip and come here and go to attach proxies. Brings up a dialog box and yes, this is the clip that we want to reattach. So now all I have to do is navigate to my uh, location where that proxy file was located and I reconnect it. So now we have attached, everything looks good. And now if I jump around in my clip and I toggle between proxy and full res, you'll see I've eliminated that issue with uh, the incorrect interpretation and everything seems to be lined up and synced up as it should. Now, what if we want to you know, do this to a whole batch of clips? Uh, what's going to be the process there? It's very similar, although it has uh, one slight, slight variation. So let's take these clips, for example. I'm going to go ahead and make sure these are being interpreted correctly. 23.976. Okay, so now all three of these clips match. So what I'm going to do is select all three of those clips and come to Proxy, Create Proxies, and I'm going to do the exact same thing here. So I'm going to click OK. Now I switch quickly over to Media Encoder, and I hit Stop. So again, the same process. So now this first clip, because it got stopped after it already started, I need to reset the status on that clip. So now I've got all three of these clips ready to go. But first I need to, again, change the interpretation here in Media Encoder. So I can uh, shift select all three of those clips, right click and interpret footage. And I'll dial in my correct frames per second. And now I've changed the interpretation of all three of those clips. And now I can go ahead and restart the encoding process. All right, our transcoding process has completed. Now let's jump over to Premiere and see what's occurred. So we look up here in our, uh, in our bin uh, project window and we'll notice again that um, of the three clips, two of them got reattached. One of them, however, is offline. And this goes back again to the same problem that we had before where when that transcoding process started and I had to quickly stop it, one of those files had already begun encoding and when we reset that particular file that you know the transcoded file that had started got thrown away and a new one was created so this is why just this one is offline but you'll notice that the other two in that encoding batch were able to attach um, correctly um, and just to verify that those are working correctly we'll scroll through here toggle toggle and everything seems to be working and in sync. So again, the only thing I've got to do to fix this problem is just select that clip, go to proxy, attach proxies, and run yes, I want to attach to that clip, 
and I come up here to my proxies window and I want to attach 009 hit OK and we are back in business for that clip let's just make sure everything looks good and yes that is attached correctly okay so that's that's essentially the workaround um, for uh, working with proxies and interpreted footage now obviously again it's not ideal and it's a little bit of extra work involved um, and of course we would hope that in future updates to Premiere that Adobe will will include interpreted footage into this proxy workflow and just make it seamless without us having to do anything but in the meantime hopefully this is helpful for you and you can uh, get your interpreted footage worked into your proxy workflow and have it work out for you that's all I have for today um, we'll see you again some other time